you don't know love, how can you give love? Where are you supposed to go when you have nothing? The tenderloin is what you make of it. Whole lot of homeless. Rug everywhere. Rug everywhere. And also there's shit all over the place. Like literally shit everywhere. People got killed, people got stabbed, people got shot. They stabbed two guys over there. They just call somebody come pick up the dead body. And everything go back to normal. Well, what kind of stuff is that? This is my La Vida, who I am. I'm Vietnamese, but I live around, uh, I work around here. I moved here like 13 years ago. I work like two, three jobs. I'm tired. From last, from last night to now, I'm not asleep yet. I do like two hours for security, uh, for cold tenderloin. They have a lot of homeless out. Help them homeless, found a job, everything. And I go to work. Another job on Tuck and High, 9 o'clock for the night time, and come out sick in the morning. And from sick in the morning, I try to go sleep because I got to go to work another one from 10 to 4. I used to sleep on the street every night, you know, but I make it. You know, I stay with friends right now, you know. I try to get some play for myself. Is there anything you like about the country? You want to know my story well? However much you want to tell us. But we don't have all year, but you know, it will. Um, well, I'm 44. I've been on the streets since I was 12 years old in San Francisco. My mother died when I was eight years old in front of me. My father was a prison guard and he was an alcoholic, didn't give a shit about me. I threw me off to the system in Michigan. My aunt had a choice between taking me and my brother and my other brother but because he had um, raped me, um, I couldn't live with him because of the state of Michigan said that me and him cannot be in the same house. So my aunt decided to take my, both my brothers instead of me and one of my brothers left me in the foster care system. So, you know, for like four years from eight until 12, I lived in a garbage bag. I lived out of a garbage bag every three months. First year, 72 foster homes. You all are blessed that you, uh, had a chance to go to school. I never, I don't know what that is. I was put in an orphanage when I was a tiny baby. I have a twin. Well, I had a twin, but she never had a life. I'm Janet Silverstein Brown. He's Janet Sil John Sil. Syl Sylvester Brown. It's amazing I'm still alive. From a tiny baby. Functioning with all of this rapes and all of this. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 life. And when I came out here, um, they considered me damaged. You know, I'm a damaged child. Basically, they said I'm a fucked up individual and that I'm not going to amount to anything in life, which they were half ass right. You know, I'm a fucked up individual, but I did amount to something, you know, a human being. I had a gun to my head and a big penis in my mouth when I was homeless. Went through a lot of suffering. A man forced me to, I didn't know about this stuff. 
I want you to learn to do this. One day you will be independent. So, you know. I met my first husband when I was 12 years old. He was a pimp in San Francisco. I, I worked as a street girl um, from the age of 12 until I was 19 when I had my first son. Me and my husband, we were together for 25 years. Um, he got stabbed about seven years ago. He got stabbed and he died. Um, my son is the one that stabbed him. In the 25 years of my life with that man, he did rearrange my face a few times. He's put me in the hospital. He's buried me alive. He's put me in pretty much a lot of things. Five months ago, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Um, I have two brain tumors in my head. I have seizures. I have a little memory lapse here, you know, but I do have a lot of seizures. Um, you know, life just doesn't give me a break here. It just doesn't give me a break at all, you know. I can't catch a, catch a break for nothing, you know. I've heard about it on TV about colon cancer, but I don't know how serious it is. But it sounds like a serious thing, you know. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Knowing that any minute I could... But hopefully, you know, with, with, with the doctor calling me, it's a blessing from God, actually. Actually, because the doctor will hear my whole story. Usually, I can't even sleep at night, you know. I don't know if it's old age, but I really need my, my rest. I came over here and because I wasn't ready to, you know, quit the, the lifestyle, the lifestyle being, um, you know, uh, drugs and not so much alcohol, but more drugs. It's a very easy city to keep money in your pocket and um, and not go to jail. And that's the most important part is it's freedom at this point, you know, freedom. The problem around here, drug everywhere, drug everywhere. No matter, everywhere you go, TL, you see all illegal immigrants, they sell drugs. And exactly the police, they don't do anything around here. I know they smoke crack and all that. I was nice to and helped them. They took advantage of me. And, and not only that, they take me for a fool. This is what they do. When you nice to a crackhead, then they tell their friends, oh, I'll find a fool. Once you have a cane on your head, gray on your oil, you a victim. I know what happened to me. I done got beat down and all that. They done, they done put me in the hospital the other day. This, they're doing the job of Satan. I started using when I was like, probably 14. In ninth grade is when I started using. You, you look, you probably, you guys walk by and see people like me smoking this shit. Or not like me, because like I said, I smoke the dope. Don't let the dope smoke me. But some people will fucking smoke the shit and just lose their mind or, you know, just do stupid ass shit, which makes us look bad, you know? Any young person who gets into cocaine it's just it's it's a horrible horrible thing especially crack it's horrible and it's just there's no control over it really you have very little control over it it just takes over it takes over your moral um compass and everything you do shit that you wouldn't normally ever think about doing you know how did you start using or why mm, because i came from a perfect family and i was bored you know i didn't start using drugs until i was like 26 after like the fourth child CPS case removal, the Child Protective Services in the state of California decided, oh, she's a ward of the state, she can't handle a baby, you know, let's take the baby from her. I sold drugs all my life, but you know, started using methamphetamine when I was 26. Whew, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. God damn, the dope was good then, but not now. It's, there's really a struggle out here, but it's also it's like how people make it, you know? I mean, my, my main struggle is depression. Um, like, I chose to be out here on the streets. I barely eat, I eat cereal milk or milk and wafers is my daily meal, you know? I don't know, um, I'm 29. I'm surprised I made it this far, you know? Um, I got clean when I got pregnant with my, one of my daughters. I got clean, I never used when I was pregnant with any of my kids, any of them. Dude, at this point, like, what, and I can't imagine what sober would look like. Um, I don't know, where, like, I still got to live right here. 
there's still every time I walk out my door I got a thousand people. <laughs> Shut up, sit down, sit, sit, sit down. I still got a thousand people yelling my name, talking about, you know, I got this, I got that, I got this, and I just think it would be very, very difficult. Um it'd be very difficult to stop. Any one of these buildings was like, I'll hire you right now if you and you can smoke all the crack you want. Like I said, if I could do that, then I would do it. You know, I, I can be a functioning addict, but I can't go get a job right now because who's going to want to hire a crackhead? You want me to go to a program? Fine, I'm in the program. That's not a good enough program. I'll go to another program. Whatever program you want me to go to, put me in there. You want me to, you, you want me to stand on my head and juggle eight balls on my feet? Hey, okay, let's do it. You know, I will do it, whatever. But when I do it and you still tell me that's not enough, you leave me no choice but to, you know, Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. You know, give the fuck up. But you have them. Right? Oh no, instead I get in a car, track that CPS worker down, show up at her house, and said, peekaboo. No, I've, I've, I've tried to get sober a couple of times, and then I've gotten, I've abstained a couple of times. And then it was just like, you know what? It's not all. It's not all that great right here. I got problems too, you know. Sober people got problems also. And I was like, shit, might as well do this with a cloud over my eyes because this shit is, this shit isn't great either. Forgive them, fuck. Forgive them. I love them all. My dog saved my life, literally twice. I had an abscess on my spine and it reached, the infection reached around to my heart. I had a 107 degree temperature. I was in excruciating pain. I laid in the bed for three days with a fever of 107. God knows why I'm alive, I don't know, because this dog was pissing on me. That's my main thing is with my dog right now. Not working or anything, just like, just getting by and making sure my dog is, is looked after. That's, that's what I'm doing in here right now. I just have a daughter at this point, and um, she's doing she's doing the way I'm supposed to. You know, what I mean, she's a homeowner and stuff already. She's so I just tell her I take one for the team just to show you know this is an example of what not to do and keep your keep your head straight. So she's she's doing good. You know, they say something like, "Why don't you get a job?" or "Where's your family?" or like, you know, it's like, "Well, my family's don't really have it. You know, um, it's all dysfunctional." Super dysfunctional. I never got to hold my twins before CPS took them. Before I even gave birth to them, the system was there to take my kids. You guys talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just adopted two, two little boys. She she got a she got approved for adoption, and they and they gave her two boys within within one week. So she's got two boys right now. They're new newborns. Both of them are coming off of some sort of a drug. Uh, one was methadone, one of them was the parent was speed. I have 12 brothers all together. I have 12 brothers, half brothers. Um, none of them are complete with my mother and my father. They're all half brothers. My dad was a hoe, you know, just like most men. But, you know, we aren't going to go there. You know, women are not hoes. We are, we are, you know, we just have options. Men are hoes. But no. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the biggest regret I have is my parents adopted me, and they they were I couldn't have ended, I could have ended up with some really horrible people at raising me, but I didn't. And um, as gratitude, I didn't show them. I didn't show them. Lucy, Lucy, come on, kick back. I didn't show them uh, the proper amount of respect. It was what it, so that's that, that kind of that sits with me all the time. That I, uh, my parents are gone now, and I wasn't. I didn't get to show them. I didn't get to be who. My, I didn't live up to my potential. I did not do that. So, what can I do? You know, because I'm a cutter, I, 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 I do self-harm. I believe in, in reduction, like harm reduction in a way that, that, that I'm not going to hurt you, I'm going to hurt myself. You piss me off, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to look at you and forgive you and walk away. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to sit here and do this shit. You know, all on my arms and stuff like that. The man I have in my life right now is really wonderful. Thank you. But he stopped me from doing this because he doesn't like being around it.
What makes me happy? You know, the short answer is um, because I don't, I'm not, I'm not locked up right now. I am happy. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to still be able to walk my dog down to the park. That that makes me happy. I am a professional driver. I love fast cars. I love going fast. I love driving fast. I see the world better, you know. But I can't do it by myself. Me and you and her, we can't do it. You got to get anybody to do it together. You know, we, we can't change the world with only three people, you know. Oh, I have a dick. I wear around San Francisco every Wednesday. No, this one. Happy hump day. 19 inches long. Nice. Yeah, it's a knee slapper. <laughs> I can helicopter real well with it too. Every Wednesday, it's hump day. I walk around San Francisco with my cock on. It's something, ain't it? It's really something. Oh, you know my 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 girlfriend for um for a hustle. We call it a hustle. Whenever you don't you don't have a job or whatever, but you still have a habit. She boosts, so she comes up with a lot of really good clothes from high end dealership uh, stores, department stores. And when she, when she gets me something from Macy's, that that makes me happy. That's that makes me happy. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Shopping makes me happy. It's making sure that somebody has something that they didn't have before, and that's a smile. It takes one muscle to smile, 32 to frown. Excuse me, you dropped that. You dropped your smile. <laughs> Force of nature. I'm gonna win a million dollars on a lottery. You know what I would do with that million dollars? I'd take it and I'd buy a bunch of shit for everybody out here. Whether it be tents, sleeping bags, pillows, a cup of hot cocoa, and whatever their drug of choice is, because you know, I gotta make everybody happy. To later, if I win the lottery, I'll be better. I wanna go somewhere like, we all just relax, you know, enjoy life. Europe, or Canada, or England, or something. Somewhere you don't see enough crime. You don't see no murder, no kidnap, no drug, everything. You know, that's how I wanna go, you know. I have a bucket list now, you know. I never thought of a bucket list before, you know. And I have simple things on a bucket list that people would be like, all right, I did that when I was like in high school. Congratulations, you want a brownie point? Because I've never done that. Like prom, it's shit like that. It's like, you know, you gotta give some to get some. You know, remember that. You gotta do a lot of good stuff, good thing. So the good thing will come to you. That's why I look at it. The richest, or the poorest. Everyone has suffering. And the only one can pass a message like this is someone that never had nothing. And know what suffering is. Because they tasted, felt it, seen it. But I know I'm here for a reason, you know, and everything, everything happens for a reason, like, you know, the path that we chose right here, and then when we leave here, whatever, the, you know, whatever the reason is, whatever's going to end up choosing my day, you know, whether it's bad or good. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be good, because I've had nothing but bad lately. Um, the, the tenderloin is what you make of it. You can come over here, and you can live your dreams of being all that uh, you've never, you never been before, or you can come here and fade into obscurity and never be seen from again from by anybody or any anyone or anybody you love it's just it's whatever you want to make of it you know i figured out the key to life the answer to life i figured it out it took me all this time but the the best thing to do in life is forgive just forgive everybody that fucks you over that steals from you that fucking does you wrong because you know what the energy that you put into disliking that person you can do something else constructive with it. I'm a painter, I draw, I'm an artist. Um, I do a lot of, lot of canvas and stuff that goes into that. Uh, uh, the only thing I can talk to is a pen and a paper. Because all I could do is write. See, I'm not the kind of person that hurt people. 
the more pain you give me, it's the more love I give. Everyone deserves love. Even someone that is, is evil, I still give love to. Because love is the only thing sometimes, could it, I mean, can open someone's eyes. I went through a lot of suffering, but I saw the beauty. I saw the love about you. San Francisco saved me. I'm Janet Silverstein Brown. Now, and I'm going to bring a little joy now. Can you imagine the music? We come from all around the world, everyone the young, the young, and to San Francisco. Everyone will know your name as you enter your way in the Golden State. Some they marry and they get dancing music everywhere. The Castro way. Take the cable to the wall, that's where all the tourists walk. City by the bay. San Francisco, the city of love. We end the world from us in the city of love. San Francisco, the city of love. We bring back the beauty in the city of love. The strongest many as we know. The greatest system in the state. Frisco all the way. Take the end of Ocean Beach and the bus 28 to the Golden Gate. Show my restaurants to go where the hills and rivers flow. Cliff House is the place. When you go back to your home, you will never forget the Golden State. San Francisco, the city of love. We end the world from us in the city of love. San Francisco, the city of love. We bring back the beauty in the city of love. San Francisco, take me home. To my native world So much beauty in the state The land of the giants And the 49ers At that time The warriors wasn't there So I had to slip this in The Golden State Warriors Kid Curry and the legend San Francisco City by the bay City by the bay Welcome to San Francisco. City by the way. No, tell me that's not good.